Then what is the relationship that exists between void ratio, saturation, water content, and that of specific gravity? So if I have my water content, we know that water content is equal to my weight of the water over the weight of the solid. So if I know weight of water over weight of solid, then I can easily express these two guys because we know that unit weight, okay, weight of water is equal to weight, unit weight of water over volume of water, sorry. So if I want to find the unit weight of water, what is it? I need to know, so if I multiply this guy here, sorry, unit weight of water, what is it? Usually we say it is what? Unit weight is the weight of a sample over volume. That is what we say, weight of any given sample over volume. And so now we need to know the weight of that particular sample. And so in our case, we are representing the weight of the sample being what? The weight of the water over the volume of the water times. So if I have this expression and I want to make the weight of water, I can easily make weight of water the subject here. And that will give me weight of water is equal to unit weight of water times volume of water. And that expression is what we have here. So in the same way, if I am dealing with the solid particles within the sample, I can have the same expression. And then now, having this expression, this is what we have. So now what will happen is that the weight of water and then the volume, unit weight of water times unit volume of water over this, then at the end of the day, this is weight of water and that is weight of water. And so they cancel out. And so I have this expression, which we need to keep. So we got that by dividing the entire expression, both on my left side and right side by what? Volume of void. Then let's have a look at this expression. When I have this expression, then I can easily find a relationship when I divide this this expression is what I get when I divide this expression I have here having w is equal to v w v w over g s so so and so I'm going to have this expression so let's try and see if we can get that so I have weight of water is equal to volume of water all over Gs volume of solid. So if I divide this by volume of void, what will I have? Volume of water over volume of void. What expression will I have? That is going to give me saturation. So the top one here becomes saturation. So if I divide this expression, let me write them on a different side. So we are looking at this expression. So having W is equal to this, if I divide this W over that of V, V, then I have G, S, V, S, all over volume of void. What expression will I come up with? Then I have W. So this expression alone is going to give me S. So if I have this expression, now I have W is equal to 
G S V S over V V. Okay. Then we know the top here has already been substituted. Sorry. W is equal to S all over G S because we found this to be saturation times R V S all over V V. And so having that expression, I can easily say W G S V S over V V is equal to my S. So, but then we know that V V over V S is equal to void ratio. So if it is flipped over and I'm having an expression like this, if I make it V S over V V, it becomes one over E. Because this, any number is already having a denominator of one. So if I flip them over, this becomes this expression. So wherever I see this Vs over Vv in this equation, I substitute it with one on E. So I have W outside there, Gs times one over E, if that will make us understand better, is equal to S. So I have Wgs on E, is equal to S. So then this expression can be gotten as what? Multiplying this E by the S. So you have what? W G S is equal to S E, which is the same as this expression there. So we need to know this expression. It's a useful one that can help us going forward. So the relationship in other textbooks that exists between E, S, W, and then G, S are given. So for example, if I have my unit weight of a sample, I can express that as this. And then, so this thing we have done, that is what the text, other textbooks will help us resolve. So the weight of a sample is the weight of the solids and the weight of water. So over the total volume Vt, so then if I know that I can easily express each one of them, WS can be expressed in terms of specific gravity times that of the unit weight of water. And then I'll do the same with this unit weight of water, which we have found. And then I can express total volume. Remember, we were able to establish the relationship between the total volume from here. And that is what we are using in this expression as the VT. And so at the end of the day, if I simplify this, I come up with this equation. So then the dry unit weight can be expressed as this. And then I can make E the subject of this equation here and arrive at that. So because the weight of water for the soil element under consideration is so we are looking at the weight of water then to be this. The volume occupied by the water, how then do I find that? That one can also be derived as this. And so, hence the definition of the degree of saturation can be expressed in this format. And that's how can we have this expression we were able to solve earlier on. So other relationships which you have to work on to prove all of them it's your duty so now we've been able to establish all of this side of the graph where we have been able to search that the volume of water or volume of water is now es we've been able to establish these things right from this expressions we have got here and that is used in finding this particular table so with this, you are able to play with. So where you are giving void ratio, you are giving saturation, and again, you are giving specific gravity, but you are being asked to look for the unit, the moisture content of a given sample, then this expression is what will help you out if you know them. All you need to do is make W the subject of this equation, or you go through the first principle approach and get it, or you use this expression to get it. All of it are going to 
help you arrive at the same thing.